Count, you must... You must have the blood of a zombie takeout, or you, you will be dead in a few weeks. To no death, Otto. You have to have zombie takeout in the gallbladder. Hello and welcome to Zombie Takeout, the B movie and cult movie show. I'm John. And hello, I'm Scotto. And this is an interesting week. Eleven and a half years, and for the first time, we made a joke about doing this once. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I can't believe it actually happened. Well, before we get to the explanation, we got some listeners submitted from Bodo. Um, this is in reference to last week's movie, Pacific Rim. Pacific Rim, what a what a joy. Maybe not. And uh, these two people get into a robot and they're connected mind wise, kind of like when Sandra Bullock and Sylvester Stallone had sex in Demolition Man. I mean, what's going on? We need kaiju fighting and monsters, kaiju fighting and monsters, and then we get a love story that takes up too much of the movie. I got so bored, I actually watch Asylum's Atlantic Rim. Hokey. And a mess, but a fun mess. I give Pacific Rim four brains. Probably would have given him five, but it had an unnecessary love story. You guys are the best. Peace out. Wow, thank he was, you. Uh, thank you, Beto. He was kinder on it than, than uh, I was. Never much. Um, <laughs> and I actually, I mentioned the Asylum version last week just because you made a joke about it. And I was like, yeah, it's really a thing. And I looked it up the next day. It, it's actually called Atlantic Rim. I sent you the trailer on uh, Facebook. The, they did. They got that close with the mockbuster. They named it Atlantic Rim. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I do need to specify, there wasn't really a love story per se. They never took it to that point. So that was actually, that brought like half a brain for me that they didn't go full on uh- into the love story. Honestly, it was kind of weird that they didn't, I thought, because, you know, they they already mm. mentally connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one more thing before we get to this week's um, clusterfuck. And I mean that oh, literally yes. this time. Oh, Not yes. literally, but like this actually is a clusterfuck. Oh, no, fuck. the movie I saw was a cluster. <laughs> well, so, <same laughs> literally here. a clusterfuck. But I mean the, the issue. Um, uh, I already put together my top uh, 10 lists for both shows. And this didn't make it? I went on a limb this weekend and decided I didn't think any of the movies we had coming up uh, were going to make it, with the possible exception of this one. Turns out this one actually rocketed to the top of my bottom list. <laughs> so I have some, to watch this now just to like, <laughs> just some of a the, treat. So some of the albums we have coming up might re- make some, may, you know, replace some of what we have. I think I have a very solid top three on the albums, or top six maybe. But I think my movies are pretty well set. So yeah, those lists are already done. And now on to this week's movies, and I say movies because <laughs> I screwed up. <laughs> we were planning to watch 1974's Blood for Dracula, aka Andy Warhol's Dracula. You watched. I watched Andy Warhol's Frankenstein. Not sure, Frankenstein. Yeah, so two Blood monsters for Dracula, in one. Flesh for Frankenstein. They're a year apart. Mm-hmm. They almost have the same cast. Yes, yeah, yeah. Except for the act, the actor who played Frankenstein. Right. The two monsters that were in Frankenstein were not in Blood for Dracula. Mm-hmm. And if I recall correctly, the actor who played the monster originally was cast as Dracula before Udo Kier came in. Anyway, on to the impromptu plot summaries, and my sponsor for Blood for Dracula, sponsored by graphic sex scenes. Are you trying to distract viewers from bad act- from the bad acting in your film? Then try throwing in a few graphic sex scenes. They won't make the acting any better, but they will get people to talk about something else. Are you sure we watch different movies? <laughs> <laughs> I watched it on my work laptop, and honestly, oh I'm a little worried. <laughs> Damn. It's for art, though. It's Andy Warhol, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Don't fire me. <laughs> and I had, it was on my day off. It was not while working. Oh, right. 
your song? Oh, yeah, I'll just do my oh. pause summary. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Dracula and his ghoul, Anton, or his manservant, because there's really no indication that Anton is enthralled. He just works for Dracula for some reason. Um, decide he needs virgin blood or he's going to die in a few weeks. So they go from Romania to Italy to find a virgin. <laughs> and, you know, they, they find out that this, you know, rest, rich, aristocrat, aristocratic couple, the the Marques and Marquis, I don't know what the Italian versions are, of <laughs> Marquis, basically the Italian versions, uh, um, are have, have a daughter who might be, uh, have a couple of daughters of marriageable age. And, you know, they decide... So, you know, maybe the Count might want to talk to them. They go visit them. They stay with them for a bit. Turns out the two daughters in question are very promiscuous. And so not the virgins that the Count needs. But the youngest daughter, who is 14, is still a virgin. Um, the two older daughters are both sleeping with um, one of the farmhands, one of the workers there. Um, they had a threesome with them at one point. Um, so, you know, and, and he rapes both of them at different times. He, um, then becomes the hero, attempts, <laughs> actually does rape the youngest daughter, the 14 year old, to save her from Dracula and then proceeds to kill Dracula. That's really it. So he rapes them to make them not virgins. Well, no, so he, that was the youngest one. He raped yes. her to make her not a virgin. The older two, he was just having a, a relationships with, or well, sex with. Kicks. Yeah. Yep. Polarities. <laughs> All right. Now time for my impromptu plot summary brought to you by Dahmer's Meat Market. Meat for those lonely nights. Are you sure uh, you didn't watch the same movie? <laughs> it's a competitor to Mel, actually. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So in this one, uh, the the farmhand <laughs> is the same guy, of course. Mm -hmm. The lab assistant is the same guy, pretty much. Uh -huh. uh, this time, instead of being Dracula, Udo Kier is uh, Baron Frankenstein, and he he has a sister wife. Uh, Baroness Katrin Frankenstein. They are, of course, of nobility. And Dracula with... had a sister, I forgot to mention. Probably the same. Oh, really? Dracula had a sister, too. I didn't see her in the, okay. the, the list, so, so it might be a different actress. Um, Monique Van Voren. Mm. Um, so, uh, yeah, they're of nobility. He's got a lab in his house, of course, where he's in his castle, where he's working away on creating a master Serbian race and um, he already has a, a woman, but he needs a, uh, a man with a virile man to, um, to uh, cohabitate with her. <laughs> and um, he sees, well, th there's this farmhand and his friend. Uh, the farmhand of course is, is really into women and the, uh, his friend uh, the Serbian is um, into, he wants to become a monk, actually. Okay. Um, so, but of course, he, he explains to his friend, well, you got to know what you're, you're missing first, at least before you make this decision. And he decides he's going to take him to the whorehouse. And uh, where we have our threesome scene there, probably with the same actor and same farmhand. Mm -hmm. um, the Frankenstein... Uh, Baron Frankenstein comes uh, and sees them go into the whorehouse. Uh, he does not see the farmhand go in first. He just sees the Serbian go in, and of course that is his ideal person, and he's like, oh, he's with all of these women on his own, so they plot, they lie in wait for when they're uh, on their way home. Uh, the farmhand is drunk, so he isn't much use to fend off him and uh, his assistant's attack. Mm -hmm. He just wakes up the next day to find his friend without a head. And uh, he also gets caught with several women by Baron Frankenstein's sister wife, who decides, uh, well, she chastises him, but decides he needs to come up to see her 
so he can give so she can give him uh, a job as manservant and of course um gigolo <laughs> and um well he starts figuring things out when they introduce his creations and his creation has his friend's head and uh <laughs> so that he he pretty much makes it a mission to go and uh find what's going on in the lab and uh he does and uh, there's a lot of sneaking around and a lot of bodies piling up literally and uh, hilarity ensues I think I need to see that movie it's um yeah the the acting is just I mean is what bring is captures your attention first because Joe D'Alessandro mm-hmm. who is the farmhand in both movies mm-hmm pretty much talks like he's a new yorker oh yeah he's doing a horrible new york accent in this one too i'm no no i think that's his real oh okay i think that's just how he talks i think i mean think about it this is like you know andy warhol in the 70s and this is whoever had on the way right so he's got this new york accent that that i think was just how he talked because you know he's italian from New York. It sounded so like cliche, though. Because <laughs> we've both heard like real New York accents. They don't sound like that. <laughs> they used to, though. They, I mean, Fair. the New York accent is disappearing. Mm-hmm. Uh, there used to be an accent for each borough, actually, at uh-huh. one point. Uh, for, I, I think after the seventies, though, they really started disappearing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's a scene with they're supposed to be in Serbia. So why the fuck would he be talking like that? Yeah. And in Italy, this, in my mind. Right, if you're in Italy. And so the, the the man who becomes the monster, uh, Surgeon Zelenovic, he um, has this thick Serbian accent, and having the two trying to have a scene together <laughs> of dialogue is really fucking funny. Because <laughs> it's like, what okay. would these two be living in the same area for? Yeah. Now, my movie was really good when nobody was talking. <laughs> it was shot beautifully the music was really interesting it was only when they were trying to act that it was ruined is right. that was that the case for yours oh definitely because uh, monique van voren who plays the the Bar- baron's uh sister wife uh is just because yeah he's literally her <laughs> wife and mm-hmm. sister um yeah, anytime she tried to say a word of dialogue and just kind of repeated, it sounded like she didn't even have a script. Like she just repeated lines over and over again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but the yeah, act- very close. The actor who played Anton, the ghoul, um, Igor and yours. Whenever Otto. He said, they called him Otto for Otto. some reason. Whenever he said virgin, he said virgin. <laughs> he and- was probably my favorite actor. <laughs> this whole thing is it a, just me or did he look like either greg ham or gary newman depending on how you want to look at it in mine he i was thinking more of like uh young ray davies okay yeah um, i can see it but i i think marty feldman totally watched this before young frankenstein because i mean he had the eyes and everything it just <laughs> oh God. it was really funny and it was interesting how, in, in mine, how they would talk about, like, what would hurt him, like, the typical sunlight and, and crosses. But he, at one point, walked out in broad daylight to get into a car with no discomfort. Later, walks into a hotel room and com- complains about it being too bright. <laughs> so, yeah, a little inconsistent there. Um, and if, And there was just a ridiculous amount of gratuitous nudity and sex. I'm assuming. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, at one point, the, the sisters, well, three of the four sisters, were, you know, tending to the field. Two of them just whipped their tits out. <laughs> and immediately, you know which one the virgin is, because she's the one who didn't. <laughs> right. The, the brothel scene in Frankenstein, I, I mean... It, it wasn't just a three-way. I think there were three women and him and mm-hmm. and the his friend who really didn't participate. Uh, so, so it was kind of a four-way. Well, that's kind of like the threesome scene. 
um, farmhand had a had a threesome. Mario is the character's name. Yes, had, had a threesome with two of the sisters, um, and they just kind of took turns and watched while the other was with him. But then, as he's combing his hair, the two sisters are making out. And in the middle of the four way, for some reason, a lizard appears. <laughs> And I'm not sure exactly where the lizard came from, but I mean, it began the first time we see it, it's on his ass. <laughs> okay. And that's the brouhaha that captures Baron Frankenstein's attention that, you know, that there's stuff going on in that house because they run out screaming and oh, they're still right. naked. And right. uh, so he he sees the Serbian come out saying, it's OK, we've got it under control kind of thing. Weirdest thing about mine, though. That that blood for Dracula. Dracula is a vegetarian. What? <laughs> Dracula, vampire, has to drink blood to live. Drinks blood a few times in the movie. Doesn't eat meat. Uh, but um, ah, uh, we may have to pause because I I'm I don't know if I can get my head around that. <laughs> <laughs> but that I mean. They make really? it very clear. He's a vegetarian. He actually says... He, I don't think if he uses the word vegetarian, but he says he doesn't eat meat. <laughs> you know, his, his diet is entirely vegetable matter. Um, he's also... The, the couple he's staying with, the De Fioris, Um first of all, they have two different accents. She's English. He's Italian. We're doing a bad Italian accent. And the um, Mr. De Fiori is just obsessed with Dracula's name. Like, every t opportunity he had to say the name Dracula, he repeated it, like, five times. <laughs> like, they wanted to hammer home, this is the Dracula. <laughs> I think in both cases, they were really just trying to make as transgressive a movie as they could. Yeah. Uh, but there's one particular scene, I mean, aside from, well, the raping, um... That that really got to me. Um, Dracula, they get to this hotel, this small hotel in Italy. Dracula's dying because he, he desperately needs virgin blood. And um, Anton comes up to the room and, and after, you know, he's in the bar. Uh, he, you know, he plays this game of like mimicking with this guy in the bar who was played by Roman Polanski. Who really came up with the idea for the film, which tells you a lot. Um, but he comes up, he shows him this loaf of bread that's tinged pink and tells Dracula that there was a commotion in the bar. And we saw the commotion kind of start, happen, start to happen in an earlier scene where a f young girl, a teenage girl, was hit by a car. And um, Anton went out, feigned like he was going to, he had fainted at the sight of her, you know, mangled body, had, had stolen this loaf of bread you know, on the way out and just soaked the loaf of bread in her blood <laughs> to give to Dracula. Well, you know, it's Italy and you got to soak up the sauce with the bread. It's, it's <laughs> all of the... Yeah. Well, let's see. There's a scene here, of course, and it's actually the reason behind my sponsor where uh, Baron Frankenstein, he's pretty prudish actually for someone who has a lot of naked bodies around mm -hmm. um however he does get amorous with his female uh zombie or, or monster they, they did call them zombies actually um but not in a way you would think you see what uh, baron frankenstein does he opens up the the suture that he has on her going along her side takes out her organs and fucks them. <laughs> okay, I can't help that. He fucks the gallbladder. Wow. Which also, of course, is the, the quote, too. Yeah. That, that is what he says after, <laughs> after yeah, I can't he fucks help that. the uh, organs. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I was just thinking of, what was the line from what we do in the shadows about <laughs> not wanting... I want to come on here. Don't remember. It's been too long. 
<laughs> it really made me want to watch that, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now, nowhere near as twisted as that, but in the threesome scene, right before the two sisters make out, um, they're talking about their younger sister and what a prude she is and blah, blah, blah. And he, Mario says, farmhand, he's going to rape the younger sister, the 14-year-old sister, to her older sisters. They don't even blink. <laughs> and then, of course, later he does. He rapes all three of them. Yeah, he's a man of his word, you see. <laughs> oh, and of course, he, Dracula attempts to feed on the two older sisters who aren't virgins. These these attempts are followed by roughly five minutes of him vomiting up blood in both occasions. <laughs> Sucker. Uh, so we had some rubber bats as special effects. There were some really horrible special effects or attempts at special effects in this this was much better off when they just went for the blood uh some of the organs were pretty realistic when they were taking them out of people but they had like this set of lungs that were just sitting there off to the side that were somehow respirating on their own (laughs) but they never really explain what they're there for and how they're respirating and and what's what's going on there but uh one of my favorite scenes or i mean if you want to really misty this movie Mm. um is when he has both of his creations complete i know spoiler alert he actually creates both monsters Mm -hmm. and has them facing each other and just wants to see him fuck her uh he just starts shouting and you know with his german accent kiss him (laughs) over and over again and of course he's just standing there and she just kisses him and he just would yell kiss him <laughs> wow like set, just you know setting the mood for romance of a German shouting uh-huh. yeah. kiss him there's one bit that in, in Butter Dracula that was particularly odd but not in a really transgressive way like you know that um uh, Mario, the farmhand, is this, you know, ultra progressive, you know, once they're a backs against the wall, once the rebellion comes type. Um, and of course he has that social change debate with Dracula, which was weird <laughs> in a fucking Dracula movie. You know, your type will be out, you know, out when, when the revolution comes, blah blah blah. <laughs> Watery tarts with the sword is the <laughs> way to see. After that debate um, he, he, Dracula spends a lot of the movie in a wheelchair because he's very weak. Um, Mario says, do you need to carry me or can you walk up the stairs? He's, Dracula insists he can walk up. He walks up, to, starts walking up the stairs, gets up one short flight, starts convulsing, falls on the ground, twitches for a while. Mario just watches him. At one point, walks up to him, just keeps watching him. Dracula stops twitching and just stands up and walks up the stairs. Like, he's fine after he just twitched and convulsed for a few minutes. <laughs> oh, another bizarre scene. Um, you know, um, Anton's telling the De Fiores that, you know, they're leaving in the morning because they can't find a virgin. Um, and um, Mrs. De Fiore, who is shocked that her older daughters aren't virgins, mentions that her younger daughter is, and her younger daughter is there with them. And Anton turns to the younger daughter, but from our perspective, turns toward the camera, almost looks directly into the camera with a really hopeful music cue, and asks her how old she is. Basically says, (laughs) how old are you, little girl? (laughs) So, uh, Polanski's idea, huh? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Ah, you don't say. And, you know, she says she's not of marrying age, he kind of accepts that. A little later, the older two daughters, who are now thralls of Dracula, decide to basically take the younger sister into their room. You think they're going to seduce her. It's a whole Lamia thing. One kisses her. The other, well, reaches up and checks that she's still a virgin. She doesn't freak out when her sisters do this. And they're going to take her to Dracula. Wow. Wow. So wait a minute, they're just going to sacrifice her to Dracula? Yeah, because they're enthralled. 
Oh, I see. He bit them, they're enthralled. Um, but the ending would have put it on the rec list were it not for all the raping. Mario <laughs> saves, of course, Pearl, the young one, by raping her, and then gets an axe to go after Dracula. He cuts off all of his limbs, and it's this... You, you practically see the tube spurting out the blood. Wow. Hilariously bad gore. Every limb cut off. And then, as he's on the ground with no limbs left, Mario's going to go in for the kill. The oldest daughter, who he had apparent, who he was talking to in a, in a previous scene, you didn't see him bite her, but she runs out with a scarf around her neck. And, you know, falls on him and says, don't kill him. And they get into a thing. And Mario throws her off. The the axe had broken at that point. He he hammers in the axe handle with with the end of the axe. Like, you know, stake through the heart style. The older sister just falls on the stake. (laughs) So you have a pile of bodies, too. Yeah, yeah. In the end. But the, that ending, if it weren't for all the rape, would have put it on the request. That ending was so brilliant. But Oh, and, and Polanski also has a cameo in, in the tavern yeah. scene. Um, right. And uh, so, yeah, Frankenstein ends in a very similar way where there are just... They literally are on top of each other, all the bodies in the end. They're just like so much carnage Mm -hmm. um organs ripped from bodies Uh, it's just (laughs) it's it's just amazing uh but then there's a subplot about the creepy kids oh because uh the frankensteins have two children of their own and they're you know they have a governess also who is murdered but like her body is never actually found or like you know no one ever makes any you know note of her bird or even it's kind of weird um but the they spy on people the kids the kids kind of help the farmhand get to the lab and uh they seem to be on his side and the ending they they don't come right out and say it but i think the kids uh go on to kill themselves you know kill people themselves too <laughs> wow <laughs> they 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 leave it like like they both have scalpels mm. and they they both start working lab equipment and you're just kind of like huh and they just freeze it before you see anything kind of a nice well, no sequel right well they're turning a crank for the for the for a person that is suspended over we'll mm. give the, the i won't spoil right. the the end and uh, you're not sure if he's... You don't see him going up or down. Right. So it's unclear whether he's letting them down or they're, if they're pulling him up. Ah. Except they are turning the crank to the right, which you would think would be... Up. Up. So <laughs> that's pretty much uh, my notes there. Mm-hmm. Now, one bit of trivia that probably applies to both films. On its release, the film was promoted with Andy Warhol's name. When asked how he contributed to the film, Warhol responded that, I go to the parties, followed up by all of us at the factory (laughs) contribute ideas. Oh, man. On the brains. On the brains. Uh, it would have been a four, but all of the rapes, I, I, especially raping the final girl to save her, I have to give it a zero. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I don't think there were rapes in mine, except for, you know, well, mm. except for what uh, happened to poor uh, uh, Delilah's uh, organs. But, yeah, but... Um, <laughs> I'm going to go with the two. Um, okay. Visually, there's a lot here. Uh, the spatter effect is there's a lot of that here too uh, but the acting and the script are um, well the script is pretty much non-existent and the acting is horrendous <laughs> and what have we learned it's really disturbing to wake up to find his his head cut off <laughs> <laughs> 
And I learned that blood is vegetarian. Yeah, who knew? <laughs> That's it for Blood of Dracula and apparently fresh flesh for Frankenstein. Um, and I mean, we were intending this as a Halloween episode. What better way to do a Halloween episode than two monster movies? Until next time when we'll be reviewing Runaway. This is an 80s sci-fi film with Tom Selleck as the hero, Gene Simmons as the villain. Completely Who knew that would house. be... Who knew that would be a step up for what we did? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, wow. we really thought, wow, that's going to be a shit movie. And uh... and I saw Runaway back in the day, and it is pretty bad, So, but still better than what I just watched. I may have seen it as a kid and just not, because I, I kind of I think I remember some details of Gene Simmons as a bad guy. I remember it being bad, and I probably saw <laughs> it in like 84, 85. So that tells you something. <laughs> Until then, of course, always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you are. There you go.